I went to Clemson University for my freshman year and I found out they had a master's program that was part of the computer science department which I was in that taught like back-end animation so like all that stuff to figure out how to make waves and things like that and then I'm like oh if you can do that for a living then somebody's drawing these characters somebody's moving them so um, that's why I decided to transfer to SCAD and then you know majored in animation and the rest is history. So I'm Jaleesa Leva. Uh, I created the show Jelly Bed and Pogo, which is a PBS Kids animated short series that has two Filipino siblings and their sea monster neighbor. And it follows like the little adventures they go on as they solve like everyday kid problems. My name is Jelly. I'm her brother Ben. I'm Pogo. I'm a sea monster and we're all best friends. Jelly Bed and Pogo. <laughs> That's incredible. Probably should have printed more before next Saturday. Are you filming that? <laughs> Primal Screen was always like pitching things, so thankfully that opportunity would just like fell from the sky. Like, and that kind of happens when you're like, in the right place at the right time. The request for a proposal that went out that we pitched Jelly Bean and Pogo for, it wanted diversity. It wanted true representation. And unfortunately, a lot of the pitches that I was seeing circulating the studio just weren't hitting that. It just wasn't right. And I got so frustrated with it that I went home and just like drew a bunch of things. And Pogo was like one of the first things I drew. These are like in the background. So mm. if you watch the show, you'll see all yeah. this. <laughs> I think there's a lot of me and my childhood in the series in general. Um, there's also a lot of stuff from our voice actors and our other writers. I wanted to make sure like at the top level that that was representation, especially because our character is going to speak Tagalog. Like I wanted to make sure people could pronounce words correctly. I wanted to make sure Lola's accent felt authentic. Wow, ang galing! This halo-halo is perfect and made with so much love. Ah, thank you, Apo. This accent is gorgeous, it's adorable. Like, I want it done right. I want it to invoke people's memories of their Lolas. And this was Primal Screen's first original IP that it was responsible for casting. Thankfully found other people who had like an online presence. So like, Vanille. So when they finally like contacted me to talk to me about being on the show, it was on a call when they told me that I they wanted me for jelly and I was really like genuinely surprised because I thought for sure I wasn't gonna get jelly. <laughs> I don't even know how this happened. Okay, like it's cool enough that I did jelly. I'm in league and now and I'm also in Valor. Like I don't know what I did to be in this position, but I do take it as not just an honor, but a responsibility. I imagine that being growing up somewhere where you don't see a lot of your culture that can make you feel alienated and that can make you feel, you know, um, ashamed of your culture. So this rep Filipino representation, it's showing you, you belong here. Yeah, it's actually a quote <laughs> from my characters. They say, I belong here, we all belong here. And I think that's the perfect message. I feel like I felt the pressure of our impact before it released. And it's hard to understand its impact after release, weirdly enough. We're, we're pioneering, which is terrifying to do. And especially when there's so little representation and you decide to tell stories like these, you're really taking on a big responsibility to pave the way for future creators. And so not only did we have to make a good show, it had to be a good Filipino show. It has to like exceed expectations because it's the first. So it, it almost feels impossible to get it all in there because the diaspora is so different and the experiences are so different. Understanding the, the size of our impact has been really hard. And I, I think that's maybe because of like COVID and things like that. So I don't know. I, mean, I have like the panel next weekend and I'm like, is anyone going to show up? <laughs> Do people know what this is? <laughs> I have no idea. For the longest time, I'm like, where are all the Filipinos in Atlanta? I don't know where they are. and. I, I think like now making active effort to like find everybody and finding about these organizations that hold these events and, and being more present in the community and helping like build it up. I think there's like a new Filipino-American era happening. Like we're in Spider-Man, we're in 
we're in the mainstream. <laughs> like, we have a show now. You know, after talking to a lot of adults about the show and listening to what they have to say about how it heals their inner child, it was healing for me too. And for somebody who thought that my story didn't matter and like no one would want to see Filipino American characters, like what do we have to say? Like this really changed my mind on that and I'm so thankful I got to do it. Yeah, I finally got to eat Barangay ATL's food. I've been wanting to try his stuff for so long. Got some stuff from Three Lolas. Made some connections. It was nice. This was like so worth it. And even though I stayed up till four in the morning, like getting everything ready and done. You know, nothing like really great is done alone. The going gets tough and like creating this was as fun as it was, was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done and would not have completed it if it weren't for like really amazing people behind me the whole time. So form your family. Ayo! <laughs>